So, uh, yeah, so guys, um, I just wanted to just quickly say welcome. <laughs> so you just guys, thanks for coming down. So the, we are, um, it's not live streaming because it's all based on the American time. So it's 12 hours behind, but all of this is going to run to catch it and you'll be able to watch it probably tomorrow morning. We suggest staying up late and staying live, but um, you'll be able to watch all the runs. They'll be on, um, yep. on their screen. I wasn't sure if I had a separate one, but yeah, you So, yeah, yeah, well, I actually watched it. I've had a very good sleep the last night. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's all on YouTube, it will all be there, so you'll see it all. I mean, the photos are all of it, like that, here's the athletes and stuff. Um, so, yeah, look really cool when it's done. Um, sorry, guys. They just need one second on their end, and then we have all the camera people locked in and good. Since she's going to be on the first athlete, like she's going to be there with the camera on that face, she's going to give you the good go when you get started indoor. Um, so we're not going to miss that. And then um, on the sound course, it will be on the athlete side, and it will be the good go. And he's a gentleman. Good afternoon. Hello everybody and welcome to the Ninja Academy in Perth, Australia, home of our first international qualifier of the World Ninja League Premier Series and our third overall qualifier. My name is Kane Casillas. Joining me today on commentary is going to be Mary Layton, the commentator ninja. Mary, we have such a banger of a competition coming out right now. We're starting off with the kids division, but it's going to be so competitive. I'm so ready for it. I'm so excited to commentate this competition, Kane. Um, hello, everyone. It is Mary, the commentator ninja, and it's Australia. So, <laughs> an international qualifier for the Premier Series. What I think is so cool about this qualifier is that we're going to get to see ninja in another country. You know, we, we're all flat, uh, avid followers of the streams here in the U.S., but we're going to get to get a closer look of what ninja really looks like in Australia right now. We already saw some interesting different holds and things that they have up in their gyms. I know that when I was watching the Ninja Challenge the uh, finals this past season, I saw a hold from Aussie Grip and I got one for my gym. I'm so excited to just see the differences, the similarities and, and what these athletes have to offer. Absolutely. We're going to be starting off with our kids division today. And the kids division is relatively new to Australia, specifically our partners, the Ninja Challenge League in Australia. Uh, last year was their first year hosting a youth championship. We've got some top competitors from last season and this season coming in. Someone notable to look out for is Lila Bovari. Lila is going to be competing in the kids division today. And she is in the top 15 for the Ninja Challenge League's kids bracket, which is insane because the Ninja Challenge League has the male and female athletes competing together. So not just top 15 for the females, top 15 overall in the country. Definitely one to keep an eye out for. I cannot wait to see how she takes on this course, but we do have uh, quite a bit of rules to go over. So Mary, why don't you take them through the uh, format of the courses? All right, so the format that we are going to follow here today, we will start the day off with what is called a placement course. So the placement course has a traditional flow format, so fall means you are done. This is a quicker course. It's usually a shorter time limit, really pushes for efficiency and speed. And the placement course is exactly how it sounds. It's going to seed you for the challenge course. Now, if you 
are, uh, you know, the last place in the placement course, you're not eliminated from the challenge course. It just means you're probably going to be running first. And as we've seen play out, it can definitely be an advantage to run later in the challenge course. Although we have seen some people with some pretty stellar uh, come from behind wins. So we'll definitely be on the lookout for that today. Our challenge course is going to be a somewhat longer, more technical course. So you'll see a longer time limit, more technical obstacles. You're allowed two retries. So if you fail an obstacle, you can retry that obstacle. But you do have to clear the obstacle before moving on. If you fail an obstacle twice, that means your run is over. So this is what determines the final results. Our top four per division are going to qualify for finals today. Now in our kids division, we have, uh, as Kane was mentioning, Ninja is relatively new for the kids in Australia. So we do have a smaller division today. When there are less than three athletes in, or less than four athletes in a division, they have to clear the first three obstacles of the challenge course in order to secure themselves a spot in the finals, which will be held at Ferox Athletics in November. So we're definitely going to see these kids still putting out their best and uh, really working for that placement. Absolutely. You know, as you were just saying, they have to beat those first three obstacles. We do have a growing program over in Australia for the Youth Ninjas. And it's just great to see the dedication that these athletes are taking. They're not guaranteed a spot necessarily when it comes to getting the top four now. They're still willing to push themselves today, them versus the course. And of course, they want to take it a step further and see how they push and compare against the rest of the world as they qualify for finals. I think that's that says a lot about our younger athletes here. Yes, big kudos to the Australian ninjas who are going to get to see compete today. I believe we're just waiting for some final clarifications on rules in the course. We'll be getting started real soon. So I'd love to hear in the chat some predictions on what type of obstacle so all of the same obstacles that we have in the United States, just different variations. What do you think their course is going to be like? So we mentioned a little bit more technical, but what is tech in Australia? We're going to get to find that out today. Kane, you're, you're very connected in the international scene. So why don't you tell me what you think about that? Absolutely. The Australian ninja scene and, and particularly the Ninja Academy style of flow is very straightforward. Uh, as you can see, by the truss here and the platforms. This gym is very much designed in a straight line with a lot of like 90 degree turns or just again, a straightforward linear path. That means they focus a lot more on grip. Uh, they do have a lot of different shaped holds based around different types of sometimes weapons, sometimes shapes, sometimes different foods. Um, and that is definitely the type of obstacle that, the types of obstacles that you can expect. However, they do have a lot of very unique balance obstacles, which I think we could see a lot of. Uh, there was one a few years back right here at the uh, Ninja Academy for the Ninja Challenge League Finals, where they had to walk across a bar and duck under, almost like a little limbo fashion, but they were balancing on a bar as well. And it was just so slow and tricky and maneuvering their body was so tough to do uh, we're not, we might not see as many quicker agility obstacles, but at the same time, we are going to see some very creative obstacles when it comes to footwork, which is definitely exciting. Uh, and again, they are known for a lot of pumpy, longer, techier obstacles. Uh, they had a floating salmon ladder at one point, and those can be absolutely devastating. I am so thrilled to hear that they like interesting balance obstacles. Anyone who follows me on Instagram knows balance is one of my favorite things to not only train, but also to put in courses. So definitely looking forward for a little bit of uh, a little bit of inspiration from today's competition. I remember the finals that you were talking about. I think that that was the year we actually saw a lot of ninjas from the United States go over. Um, I'm remembering, I think Lucio Batista was one of those ninjas who yes, went to compete. Was. Yep. Along with, uh, John the Giant as well. So quite a few, uh, quite a few names that might be recognized. 
And uh, yeah, that was a great balance obstacle. We actually ended up replicating that at uh, one of the gyms that I train at. And it, it's tricky. Yeah, and uh, shout out as well to Jake Murray, because in that same year, he was the runner up at their championship, made it to the uh, final obstacle of their third stage. It was quite a sight to see, but I believe we are all about the Australians here. I don't think we have anyone flying overseas joining us. It's going to be just our friends down under, which will be very excited to see. I know we've got a lot of heavyweights coming in the elite division later on today. Uh, I unfortunately will not be on commentary for that one, but I'm excited to watch that as a fan. Uh, we've got Daniel Waterman, definitely a big name to watch out for in the future as well. He has uh, made his impact and made his presence known both in the Ninja Challenge League and on uh, Australia's TV shows as one of the younger guns to watch out for. So I'm, I'm very curious as to how he uh, takes on this course and what kind of course Dave Ravi has cooked up for us. Dave has definitely been known to make courses that gas you out, but he's also known for making courses with obstacles that just the, the slightest mistake can cost you. And I don't mean in the sense that like, oh, maybe you, you just swung wrong or you maybe weren't quick enough turning the cane around last week at Motive. I mean, like if your hand is a centimeter off axis, you are done for. And that's how brutal some of his courses can be. And uh, that's, that's the bar that our Australian ninjas have had to hit for the last eight years or so. Lots of stuff to unpack there. Well, interesting to hear you say one of the young guns when referring to the elite division. It's uh, it'll be interesting to see if that's uh, following suit for America. You know, lots of uh, ninjas who have been in the game for many many years, but a lot of teens growing up. Um, and then the technicality that it sounds like we're going to get to witness today. That's that's definitely exciting. Absolutely, I, I again I can't wait. It's going to be it's it's so. It's just so cool. <laughs> it's so cool to see um, us finally put the world in World Ninja League and really take those trips out. And Ninja Academy is a great place to be. If you guys ever head down to Perth and you're craving some ninja action, this place has it all. I think we might also possibly expect a warped wall. He, tip I know that most of the Ninja Academy courses okay. typically end with a warped wall. Uh, as I said, it, we might be coming down a straight lane, and at the very end will be a buzzer at the top of said very famous wall. A very classic ninja setup right there, having the warped wall at the end. Kind of an iconic warped wall, honestly. Um, Olivia Vivian has lots of tutorials, lots of fun videos. Uh, Olivia Vivian, high-level ninja, she's not competing with us for this weekend, but um, has been out to the World Championships this past year, and lots of um, lots of really great things have happened in this gym. All right, I see a run order. Yes. Taking a look over, it looks like we've got. Yep, we've got Lila, who I mentioned earlier was top fifteen in the Ninja Challenge League in their current season. You can catch their national championships, or world championships, I should say, uh, in October of this year. Always excited to see what they're cooking up. Um, but Lila currently standing in the top 15 across all kids in Australia, which is very exciting. I look forward to seeing her run. And then we jump over to the kids' male division. We've got Dion Joyce, Sonny Panowitz, and Blake Artis, who are, to my knowledge relatively new to ninja have not been able to find them running any past comps this might be their first year getting in a ninja and they're already up and running with the best in the premiere series definitely it sounds like we have some talented athletes that we are going to get to see one of those talented athletes will be coming up in Mature Kids a little later. Uh, Casey McLaren in the Mature Kids female division. Casey was fourth place at the World Championship this past June and also was the youth champion in the first Ninja Challenge League Championship. Not only that, 
She was the only person to defeat all three stages of that championship. So has the grip, has the speed, has the endurance. And I think those are all of the necessary skills she'll need to attack this Ninja Academy course. But right now, all right, we've got a little bit of a different view of the course here. I spy some donuts. I spy an interesting special delivery variation over there. Almost looks like a half of a butterfly wing. And it looks like it looks like Isla stepping on up. She's going to be kicking us off. Just waiting for the go-ahead from the refs. Maybe not entirely at the starting line yet. But she looked pretty dialed in. She seems She's definitely mentally prepared, Mary. All right, and here's a look at our first obstacle. It looks like a rope climb up to the top of a slanted wall. Time for the iconic jumping spider. Look at those walls. Those look nice and sticky. Absolutely, and you can see Lila's exact splits on the bottom right with the timer there. Taking a quick move through the steps and is popping up to the Lachey Lane. Definitely a speedy course, but she's going to have to generate as much power as possible if she wants to get through this efficiently. Great static. Yep, looks like everything is within reach here. No major laches on this. I think that we'll likely see that happen in some of our other divisions, but an interesting... I wonder where her dismount is here. Looks like she's got to go past the red. Oh, and Ooh. just gets the clear. Had to turn herself around. A little awkward, maybe, for someone a little smaller and was trying to swing it herself, but it worked. And it looks like they're going to mark her run as over. Might have run out of time. Yeah, it looks like everything is within reach here. No like major lachets on this. So that grab to the barrel definitely, or punching bag definitely, held her up a little bit. We might have seen her get all the way through donuts if she had had maybe a little bit more time or a little bit more swing going into that. Up next should be coming up for, uh, should be waiting on Dion Joyce. As we can see here, is walking on up to the starting line. Dion just maybe getting some final direction on where he's got to start. I love the production of it. You get the, the approach up to the starting platform. And really give the athletes their moment before starting off. Guess the thumbs up. You're getting ready. Looks like and, uh, Dion is part of the Joyce Boys. I wonder if we'll see another Joyce Boys competing later today. I saw another shirt with a yeah. similar look. If I'm not mistaken, that might have been his older brother, Joshua Joyce, who's going to be competing in the teen male division. Fantastic. Ninja's a family affair. Oh, and an interesting flywheel here. It, it does not rotate around the, its center. Rotates off of a axis there. And let's see if Dion can get a nice big pullback as he grabs onto this. Now it looks like he's going to try to come to it with a little power. Now he's got to slide down to get to his dismount, struggling a little bit. Oh, and a nice little jump off. We got the clear. Still has plenty of time to get through the donuts before he hits the buzzer. About 15 seconds left. He's trying to match and grab now, pick up the, pick up the pace a little bit. Knows he's got to move fast before hitting the buzzer, which he does. 59.72 of the wow. time in a minute. He just barely got it, but it you works can't get for much. You can't get much closer than that. No, you cannot. You can see here he was very smooth through the first four obstacles. It was just on the donuts and perhaps on that punching bag that took away a little bit of his time. But it happens, and, and Dion still made the most out of it. Our first buzzer of our Australian qualifier. Fantastic. And this really is a course similar to the placement courses that we have seen in the other gyms run in the United States, Ferox and Motive. You really do need to push the pace. There's not really any place where you can rest and pause here. You've got to keep moving if you want to get the full clear. 
Exactly. While some of these obstacles may not be as techy, there are definitely no easy obstacles here because of how quickly you have to move. As Blake Artis is showing us, heading into the spider walk now. Oh, Ooh. a little bit of a stumble, but he fixes it and corrects it. Coming onto the steps now. Just got to hop right over. Taking a little bit of a step approach, really leaning into it. He's about four seconds behind Dion's pace right now. Ooh, oh, not quite enough swing on the pendulum flywheel here. Without it being on a center point. Whoa. Oh, good save. You know, a little maybe harder to build up that swing. Wingspan. Maybe with a smaller wingspan, he might have uh, been a little low on time. We're seeing that struggle again as he's uh, having a hard time wrapping his hands around the punching bag there. You know, and this might just be a little bit of the inexperience and the newness of these athletes to, to Ninja. He really kind of wasn't sure if he was going to reach with his hands or his legs, but still a great effort out of Blake. Really pushed himself there. He had a couple of crazy moments. Check this out. One-handed grab, able to recover, and just didn't have quite enough time to fully figure out that punching bag obstacle. Regardless, that's going to put... Blake in second place coming into our challenge course. Dion running second in our kids male division. Now just a reminder, our kids athletes are going to have to beat the first three obstacles if they want to qualify for the Premier Series Finals due to uh, having fewer than four athletes in the division. But honestly, there's a part of me that kind of prefers that because it, it puts more emphasis on the individual skill of these athletes, especially these up and comers who are maybe just getting into the ninja scene now that a youth division has been opened up for them. Absolutely. I think you, you wouldn't want it to be a gimme. It's the Premier Series where we're finding the best of the best of the best, right? It's our top 25% of athletes. So it's definitely fitting that it's more of a challenge when there is lower numbers in a division as opposed to regular season. Um, so very, uh, very happy with that. Um, choice from the WNL to to make that a qualification absolutely and and how about that how about that course run as well Th these are some very interesting obstacle choices I think particularly for our smaller athletes that punching bag in the background definitely one of the more time consuming things on this speed course you know it really is and you saw um earlier our first athlete Lila that was pr probably the defining moment for her that prevented her from uh, finishing the full course. She was able to get through the Lachey lane, but just figuring out how to build up her swing on that and getting to the dismount was really what made her unable to complete the donuts after. And it looks like our cameras are getting shuffled around for our challenge course. We'll be back in just a bit as our athletes are going to be going over the rules of that course. And they'll be ready to run very shortly. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is Mary Layton, the commentator ninja with Kane Casillas, here to bring you to the challenge course at Ninja Academy in Perth, Western Australia, for the premiere series. We just saw our three kids athletes have a exciting run on the placement course. The um, punching bag that you see behind the graphic here, kind of the story of the day, that's what really kept um, two of our athletes, Lila and Blake, from 
um, oh, excuse me, Lila and Dion from completing the course. So we have already seen in this course, you know, evidence of, of, of ninja, right? It's, it's that one little obstacle that you're not really thinking is going to be too difficult tripping you up. So I think that that's some pretty awesome foreshadowing for our challenge course here today. Now, just a reminder on the rules of the challenge course. Kane, why don't you take it away? Absolutely. So our challenge course is a new format to the WNL. Uh, this allows athletes to come in with two different retries. You must use one retry per obstacle, which means you get two attempts on an obstacle if you fall. You can't fail the same obstacle twice or your run ends. And if you use up both of your retries, you have none left. That means three strikes and you're out of here. Don't fail the same obstacle twice. Don't fail three different obstacles. And you're golden on the challenge course. Now, because there are fewer than four athletes in the kids female and kids male divisions, uh, we will have a slight alteration of the rules. Our athletes are going to have to beat the first three obstacles. Uh, as Mary was saying earlier, we don't want to just give these away for free. These competitors are still going to have to earn their spot in the finals one way or another. And I'm, I'm very excited to see just exactly what those three obstacles are, specifically the third. Because last week at, at the Motive Qualifier, we had quite a few athletes not able to defeat the switch grip, the third obstacle, and that ended up denying them a spot in the finals. Yeah, and especially looking at some of the obstacles I see here, I'm seeing Rolling Thunder that just got reset in the background. That can be a challenging upper body obstacle for the kids. And I, I do think even though we just have to get through the first three for these athletes to be qualified for finals, I think we will see the retry system come into place because you mentioned this earlier, the course designer here, Mark, he has a lot of tricky, precise obstacles. Now, one of the challenges in course design is always how do you scale a course for the kids division? It's always a challenge and so we'll have to see how Dave has uh, modified his uh, his typical courses for these kids but I, I think it's going to be a challenge not just because it's the challenge course just a challenge period and we're gonna be kicking off our challenge course with our only athlete in the kids female division Lila Bovari as I was saying earlier Lila coming out of Western Australia ranked 15th in the country in the kids division across both male and female and as we can see we were talking about balance obstacles early on that's a spinning log she's standing right in front of to okay start well the course. all right <laughs> okay i see you dave i see you i see you australia i'm i'm very curious as to how that's going to pan out i'm curious as to how much it spins you know yep, these that's seem so finicky I'm trying to see, can't really see below the bottom of the screen. Is it on rollers? Is it flat on the mat? Both could be challenging. If it's flat on the mat, you have the squish. But Lila's off. Oh, Ooh. it's on rollers. Okay. Okay. All right. And that's going All right. to be obstacle one. Yep. That's going to be the first of Lila's retries being used. Going to have to move a little quicker. I would say her foot placement wasn't bad. She just took a little too long on it. And there's the extra speed. Excellent. Great adjustment from Lila. And quickly through the second obstacle as well, onto rope swing. Oh, no. Okay, as that looks like the wall is uh, not in play. This is going to be the second of her two retries, which means she and has to beat this if she wants to punch her ticket into the finals. All right, looks like she's waiting for her countdown, grabbing the rope. Got a nice amount of energy. And moving on to obstacle four, and it looks like Lila is qualified for the finals in November, but she's not stopping. She's keeping on. A nice, oh, cliffhangers oh, into swing. books. The and they You were not the kidding. Game. Like I said, he does like to have his fun with holds and floating obstacles on his courses, but it wasn't a problem for Lila. Even those middle cliff ledges, which I don't know if you noticed, they were thinner than the first and fifth yeah great grip strength out of lila right here she's really moving very quickly through the rolling wheel here looks like she's locking it in for her dismount it looks like we've got some mini cliffs and cannonballs coming up 
Love to see the emphasis on grip strength. Yes, definitely very much more of a grip focused course that we're seeing here. Whoa. And wow, going for the bump. Was wondering what she was doing, but it works for her. She skips that last cliff and just dismounts automatically. Ah, uh, now this is uh this is something that you will find pretty commonly in Australian competitions. Fish hooks, these types of holds can be very, very tricky, but at the same time, Lila is making it all work. Oh, little she really, stuff, baby. Uh, she really is making the that look effortless. Just the flick of her wrist seems like such a natural movement. You can tell that it's something that they, they do pretty regularly. Oh. And looks like she's out of time, but got very deep into this challenge course. Great performance out of Lila. Absolutely. Looking back, you can see that adjustment really speeding through that spinning log. And then not a problem on the books at all. Something I envy. And that bump out to the cannonball as well. Very, very smart move. Maybe didn't feel as confident on the cliffs, so she decided to avoid them entirely, and it paid off for her. Getting to the yeah, second and obstacle. It also set her up really nicely for that dismount. Um, just with a, a huge back pull like that, she was able to easily exit the obstacle. Well, congratulations to Lila. We'll be seeing her in the Premier Series Finals. We'll now be right, moving so on to our kids' male division with our first runner, Dion Joyce. Member of the Joyce Bros. Now, Dion has seen this rolling log play out before, so it'll be we'll be interested to see what type of approach he takes here. Oh no, this is if Blake. He's... Never mind. I'm so oh. sorry. So sorry, Blake. I was gonna say it was. They I was looking for the shirt, them. actually. <laughs> I was like, did he change shirts? No, Our bad. Sense. As, as uh, Blake plays second on the placement course, this does mean that he'll be running first. Wow. That was a great display of balance going so easily across the rolling log. That's not easy to do. So fast, already on to the fourth obstacle. Blake is cruising right now. And with that, Blake is also qualified for the finals. Now we're going to see if he can get to that buzzer. Hasn't had to use any retries to this point. Really looking like a, a much more confident ninja on this course run than on his placement course. Really turning on the Jets. I, I don't know if we're going to see a, a change in the standings here. I think it's absolutely possible. Look at how efficient he's being on the rolling wheel here. Not really pausing for anything either. We're going to get some grippy and uh, strength intensive obstacles here. And Blake so far has not rested. Just going to grab the next cliffhanger already. Has to readjust before grabbing the cannonball. But he's back and in business. Those are not tiny cannonballs. I, I just want to point that out. You know, those are definitely a little bit bigger, really more softball size than your typical cannonballs you'd see. So, and with the smaller hands of the six to eights, that's, that's definitely a challenge. Definitely not a challenge for Blake as he got through that with <laughs> now coming into the fish hooks. Oh, got a little stuck there. Needs to lift it a little higher. Oh, but it looks like we're seeing a fail here. Going to use a retry unsure as to what he did but regardless his first of two retries is being used now i wonder if there was some incidental contact with the mat looks like he potentially could have it you see he's keeping those feet together keeping those knees up so that would make sense we saw a quick look down as well probably trying to be wary of that now and it looks like the rope ramp makes its return as he's coming up for the buzzer. All right. And, and there we have it. clear. Oh, look at that. Blake he is Artist. so happy. With a time of two minutes and five seconds, Blake Artist gets his redemption. Not completing the placement course, but completing the challenge with incredible displays of grip strength there. 
and body awareness. You could see him really tucking those legs up, making sure he didn't kick anything. An excellent showing from our first male kids athlete. Now we're going on to Dion Joyce. This is the member of the Joyce Bros I was just talking about. So he now knows that since he's going second, he needs to beat this course with a time of 2.05. Now he is a little bit taller than Blake, so hopefully he learned from Blake's mistake and will avoid his feet hitting the mat. I think, we'll, I think we have a, another full clear coming up here. What do you think? I also believe that we are getting another full clear here. And Dion is really putting the pedal to the metal, already qualified for finals, but it looks like he's going for that first place finish. Time to beat is Blake's two minutes, five seconds. Look at that lock off strength here. Ooh, you know, dude. a lot of times you'll see some, some kids a little bit more fully extended, taking more of a monkey bar approach, but Dion just cruised through that like he's cruising through the rolling wheel right now. That is so fast. I don't, I don't know if we're going to see anyone do that faster today. That was super efficient. It's definitely a high bar to clear. But we also have a lot of capable athletes, including Dion, as he's just going to, oh my goodness, locking off on the cliffs and just doing a quick match over. Now coming up to the fish hooks. I would argue this is the most time consuming of the obstacles here. So if Absolutely. he wants to pass this time, he's going to have to push it. And we're getting to that the point where all the athletes are getting stuck, but thankfully only two tries for Dion here. He's at the dismount, quickly up the rope, about to hit the buzzer. What is his time going to be? That's going to do it for Dion with a time of 1 minute, 15 seconds. That's going to put him in first place. Dion Joyce locks in the sweep on the placement and challenge course. As we can see here, very, very quick through the rolling wheel. Not bothering to stop for anything. Got a little stuck on the fish hook, but popped right off. Didn't have to use any retries and made his way up to the buzzer with the fastest time. Flawless run out of Dion for the win. And all right, so we've seen our athletes. We have seen Blake. We've seen Dion. We've seen Lila. All of them are now qualified for the finals. How do we think that we are, how do we think this is going to play out when we get some of these athletes over to Ferox Athletics? How do we think they're going to fare? I think that they're going to have a lot of energy and endurance for any type of pumpy obstacles, big dynamic moves. We can absolutely see that. We did not, however, see a lot of moving object obstacles here. Not a lot of bar tech, ring tech, cane tech, any of those. So currently a bit of a mystery, but at the same time, I absolutely have faith that these athletes uh, either are putting in the work on it or will put in the work if they're making their way out to Brooklyn. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone so much for joining us for the kids division of the Premier Series put on by World Ninja League. We are out at Ninja Academy in Perth, Australia. We've been so lucky to witness the Australian kids division showing us what they've got in the tank. And we're thrilled that we are going to have three exciting athletes joining us for the finals at Ferox Athletics.